Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this picture. This was captured with homemade macro equipment. The stunning result is testament to the quality of old photographic equipment combined with digital capture techniques. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. OK. So this is the basis of what I'm going to use to capture the image with. This is a relatively old 5 by 4 inch large format camera. And on the front of this camera, I just removed the lens board here, I have a Schneider 150mm 5.6 lens. OK, let's pop that in there. Now one of the advantages of using an old camera like this is that they are very modular. You can take everything off it. So for instance, I can just remove the bellows here, like so, which gives me access uh, to the back plane here, uh, and this is referred to as the front plane. OK, so now if I remove this back plane, which is normally the focusing screen, I can now replace that with a digital camera. And here I have a Phase 1 IXA 180. Uh, now this has been learned to me uh, from an aerial imaging company. But there's nothing to stop you mounting your own uh, full format, for instance, cameras uh, on the back of uh, an old 5.4 camera like this. Now one of the other advantages of using a, an old 5.4 uh, system like this is that you can extend the bellows, which will give you, in effect, a macro uh, lens. So if I just adjust this backstop, I can pull this all the way back to around here somewhere. And now I can just replace the bellows and just attach it to the camera at the back here. There we are, and I'm using nothing more technical than a couple of pieces of sticky tape. There. So, to enable me to use this uh, in conjunction with flash, I've got a flash trigger here, uh, which I've plugged into the uh, camera back. And just to cover any uh, holes or anything around the join, where the old camera meets the new, I've just got a piece of black cloth, which I'm just going to lay on there, like that. And there, that's our macro camera built. Now, all the control for this camera will be through Capture One software. So if I just turn the camera on... So these are all the settings that we have on the camera at the moment. So it has a shutter speed, of 1 100th of a second. Uh, now that's the uh, focal plane shutter, which is at the back of the camera in here, and it's relatively slow because being a medium format camera, it's got a very large distance to run. Then we have a sensitivity, ISO 100, and the software is showing an aperture of f8. But as the lens has no connection to the camera whatsoever, actually at the moment the lens is wide open, so it's at 5.6. So with all those bits set, what I'm going to do is just align the camera with the subject, which are the flowers in the bowl there. So I'll just spin this round, like that, there we are, and tip it down to point at the flowers. There we go. So now we have the camera uh, looking down at the flowers. And at this point, it's probably a good idea to think about lighting it. So I'm going to use this uh, flash head to light the subject. I'm just going to place this above it like this. About there should do. Now this has a zoom reflector on it and also uh, some barn doors. Uh, now the idea of the barn doors is to keep the light uh, concentrated on the subject and not on the camera at all. Uh, and the reflector should just concentrate that to give us the equivalent of uh, sunshine. So with all this in place, 
We'll grab an image and see what we get. Okay, and for a first capture, not bad. It's a bit burnt out. I think I need to reduce the energy in the flash. So to reduce that uh, energy, I'll take it down by three stops. There we go. And we'll just grab that again. OK, so that's not too bad. It's possibly a little dark. The other thing to have a look at here is the actual depth of field, which is uh, a little limited. So what I might do is shut the lens down on the camera to give me a bit more depth of field. So at the moment it's on 5.6. So I'll just manually shut that down, just adjusting the lens here, and I'll take that to f16. There we go. Now that's a three stop change, so I'll need to add uh, three stops of energy to the lights to compensate. Now with that done, let's grab that image again. There we are, that seems to have worked quite well. The exposure is actually looking quite a lot better now. On the old lenses, uh, the actual f-stops aren't quite as accurate as they are these days on modern lenses. Um, so a little bit of leeway was always required for the older lenses. But I think that's looking OK. I'll just zoom in and we'll check the focus. There you go. And you can actually see the individual cells that is making up the petal of this flower, which is quite amazing, really. OK. Now, as for the actual composition of this, I think I'd like to move the whole thing over a little. Now, again, with a technical camera such as this, you have all sorts of different ways to do that. The simplest would be just to move the back. So what I'll do is just use the control here, and we'll just move the back over slightly. We'll just grab that again. There, that's the sort of thing that I want. So that's looking pretty good now, I think. I'm just going to zoom all the way in, just to have a close look, and we'll just make sure about the focus, which is good. I actually even like the out-of-focus part. I think the rendition here is really good. So that's it for the uh, capture. Uh, the picture that I've got here, I'm quite pleased with. So what I'm going to do next is go into Photoshop and just do the bare minimum of post-production. OK, so here we are in Photoshop, and I've loaded up the file of the image that I captured earlier. And you can see that this really has uh, an exceptional amount of detail. So the first thing that I actually want to do here is just make a copy of this file so that I can edit the copy and then keep the camera original. So the way that I like to do that is just to go on to the layer here and right-click the mouse, ask for a duplicate layer, but ask for a new document. And we'll just call this macro flower. There we go. OK, so the software has made me this new file at the top here, so I can now just dispense with the camera original. And this is what I will be editing. And really, there's very little to do with this. What I think I might do just to start with would be to just crop the image down a little. So using the cropping tool, I'm going to put in a specific ratio, as I'll be using this for video. And I'm just going to tighten the image up on this part of the flower. As this was captured on a medium format back, I have an awful lot of latitude in doing this. There we are. That seems to be the sort of thing. Just click on OK. So even after that rather severe cropping, uh, the image is still quite large. I have a width of over 7,500 pixels. So I could have gone in a little more. And actually, what I think I might do is just get rid of this part of the picture here. It's a little distracting. So I'll just 
recompose the image like so. There we are. There, that's better. That's the sort of thing I want. Uh, I might just take down uh, the very edges uh, just to concentrate the image a little. Get that a bit bigger on the screen. Even with that severe crop, uh, I'm still looking at uh, an image at 25%. So to darken down those areas, what I'm going to do is add an adjustment layer. Uh, and I'm going to add a levels adjustment layer. And I'm just going to generally take the whole image down a little. There we are. And possibly just control the contrast a bit as well. There we go. Something like that. Okay, and then I'm just going to click on the layer mask here and just invert that. So now wherever I paint on this layer mask with white will reveal that particular part of the layer. So just make sure that white is selected. Grab a paintbrush. I'm going to make that very soft and a bit bigger. I'm just going to take that across the edges, like that. There we are. Now if you think the effect is a little too much, and I do, uh, you can just reduce the opacity. There we are. So you've got an awful lot of control doing it this way. So that's with it, and that's without. So it just takes it down that little bit. And there we have it. So this rather stunning image has been produced by using very old camera equipment. I think the lens on that 5x4 camera is possibly older than me. And by combining that with a relatively modern digital back, you're able to capture images such as this. And I think that's worked rather well. OK. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching how I made that image, and if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear, and don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and hit the like button. Thank you very much for watching.